Hey everyone, it's Mike with It's Pittsfield Tonight. I'm going to jump right into it. So, last night was uh, a city council meeting, and it was the first Pittsfield City Council meeting back in city council chambers. So, uh, that was good to see. Um, we were missing, who were we missing? I think uh, Councilor, at large Councilor Yuki Cohen. Uh, but other than that, I believe everyone was there. Um, there were a couple things that were the big topics. The one I'm going to touch on that was um, really brought up that people were waiting for was our Ward 4 City Councilor, Chris Connell, submitted a petition um, asking the mayor to give an update on where we stand with crime and gun violence happening in the city. And. Uh, the mayor did show up and she gave your, uh, you know, your typical political answer about all the programs and all the things, good things, no doubt, but things we already knew. Uh, it was just your, she's a good politician. She's a good orator too, but she's, she's a politician. So the real information came when Chief Wynn got up there and really what we wanted to hear, uh, the parts that everyone was waiting for, Chief Wynn uh, informed us. And that was basically hotspot patrolling that's been taking place, uh, partnership with the state police, the sheriff's department. Uh, he's uh, talked about when uh, officers on duty are on patrol, when they're not active with a call, uh, they're to go and patrol certain areas. So they've really focused on that. And those are the th that's all people needed to hear. That's what people wanted to know. The fact that, yes, there's a national surge, and I knew there'd be a counselor to have to bring that up. Uh, has it happened somewhere else? Aha. Uh -huh. I mean, what? We all get that. We all get that. I hate that. Look over there. <laughs> Why do we keep doing that? Everybody knows there's a national rise and this and that. Everyone knows that. The, the problem in Pittsfield with the type of violence and crime we have in Pittsfield has nothing to do with the pandemic, has nothing to do with any of that. It's been uh, this way for quite some time, and over the past five years, every year, it has escalated. Those are the facts, and that's based off of the FBI's crime da data reporting. So those are a fact. So Yes, we get that. You know, there's been a murder before, too. I mean, is it true that Cain killed Abel? Hmm. So I guess all these other murders, I mean, hey, Cain killed Abel. I mean, it's happening everywhere. I hate that. How was that relevant? It's, it's almost when you talk, when you hear politicians talk like that, it's almost like they're insinuating the public is dumb and they don't know these things. The public just wanted to know what are we doing to address our crime issues that are focused in these certain neighborhoods. That's all. That's what they wanted to know. So nonetheless, the mayor did come out and she talked about, you know, over the past five years uh, or four years, they've uh, the city has contributed over $800,000 to different groups and organizations and we get all that the Breen Center all of it we get all that those are wonderful organizations and all that that's not what this was about this was asking about specifically what are we doing right now about the violence that is where it's at not well since it's a national epidemic blah 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 oh, I hate that that drove me I knew it was coming. I told everybody it was coming. So the other thing they, they mentioned briefly also, which they couldn't talk about till, uh, evidently until August, is, as you all know, the previous city council meeting, uh, trash was discussed a lot. And Chris Connell, uh, again, submitted a petition. He wanted to know what was going on. He saw some changes in the contract that they were talking about negotiating. Um with Community Eco, who is, uh, runs our facility. Many people know it as Vicon or Covanta, but the one out on Hubbard F, our facility, they burn and incinerate all our trash. It's converted into energy, uh, I believe steam energy. But anyway, uh, 
he was Chris Connell, Councillor Connell, was told by uh, our commissioner Ricardo Morales that it's just boilerplate stuff, normal. And then three days later, Community Eco filed for bankruptcy. Uh, so that was finally brought up. Why the Berkshire Regal hasn't reported on that, I don't know. I guess they don't feel it's important. But um, that was brought up, and then they can't discuss it. For legal reasons right now, they can't even discuss anything. So it, it will be coming back in August to the council, and they can discuss it then. Uh, bike lanes on North Street. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't understand it. I really don't understand. I was up there. I was so confused because just when I thought I figured out what was happening, again, here come some more cars in what I think is the bike lane. And I'm like, what are they doing? And they're turning. And, and they don't know what to do. The whole, the whole thing, I don't understand. I don't know. I guess bicycles are the future. Bicycles and eating in the streets. Somebody should have told the Wright brothers, stop focusing on that airplane nonsense and focus on your bicycle shop. That's where the future is. So, I don't know. We're envisioning a Pittsfield where even though more than half the year it's too cold and there's snow and ice and all that, it's not really good bicycle uh, weather. Uh, our geography here, we're kind of spread out. We're not like Key West or parts in Southern California where bicycle traffic is important and it's year round and it's transportation it's all those things i can't find people on bicycles so i'll go looking again i've been filming every day but anyway that north street thing wow i don't know i guess they're just going to keep experimenting so i don't know what to think of it it's bizarre and we've given most of the street over to bicycles that are not there that's the weird thing like we could have made that a chariot lane and it would get as much use or a unicycle lane. Um, so anyways, I'll touch more on that and we'll watch how that plays out as they put the proper signage in and start to, the rollout of that was horrendous. Uh, and it still is, it needs to be fixed. So uh, the 32 million, or uh, it's almost 33, I think it is 33, something like that, but 32 point something million, 32.6 million, whatever it is, it's uh, 32 to 33 million dollars that from federal money that the city of Pittsfield got, Mayor Tyre did mention that. Uh, she said she's putting together an advisory panel of seven to eight people, something like that, seven to nine people, and she's going to be putting out a public survey for everyone to send in suggestions on, on what they think that money should be used for. Uh, interesting, very interesting, because there's a lot of important projects it could be used for to offset taxes, but I don't think that'll happen. We'll spend it, but I don't think they're ever going to look at anything that would do anything to actually reduce taxes. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, the bar tour. So uh, I, I know many of you saw that post. Mark Tully, uh, a good friend of mine and one of our guest correspondents at It's Pittsfield Tonight, Mark's done ton of stuff with me over the past few years. Um, we're doing our Pittsfield uh, tour of our best bars, taverns, and pubs. Um, so that's really exciting. It, this was not planned. It kind of spawned from uh, a, a post that Slater from Slater and Marjo on uh, Live 95.9 put up on their Facebook page. And it kind of just trickled from there. So uh, Again, it wasn't planned, but the response is overwhelming, and I'm really excited about that. So uh, bear with me. Uh, I'm going to need a few days here. I'm organizing everything. So I've got a uh, Monday the 19th, July 19th, uh, the first episode with the Madison, uh, which is one of Pittsfield's oldest bars. It opened in 1935 as the Madison Cafe. I will be highlighting that one to start. Um, I've got to finish a few things up with Bill, the owner. So, Bill, I'll be in touch. Uh, and then, secondly, will be the Crossroads. Um, and third, I have booked that one, too. I can't remember right now. But uh, I'm everyone who's contacted me, basically, I'm going to get to you, and I want to get them all. So all our bars, uh, taverns, or pubs, um, if, if you want to participate and have a visit from me, or Ma me and Mark and do a little... 
uh, segment on your bar, we'd love to do it. <laughs> so this is to help out and highlight our local establishments. There's some great places I don't think a lot of people are really familiar with. So after the pandemic, you know, it's it's a good time to re-familiarize everybody with, uh, with our local uh, establishments. And there's some, like I said, some great places. Um, so again, bear with me on that. I'll be in touch with everyone. And the first episode of that starts on Monday the 19th. So that is truly it for now. Hopefully the rain will go away. Uh, I was wrong about a drought this year. Oh boy, was I wrong on that, but that's a good thing. Uh, I think anyway, we got to be completely out of it by now. Um, but anyway, all right. So yeah, be good and I'll catch y'all tomorrow.